many of us know the the quote you know those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it um and, and it is a unique time right we we obviously that you know in human history there wasn't ai before the technology is new but a lot of the underlying issues are are you know very very old um and, and if if you're not familiar with the holland tulip bubble of the 1600s um it's a great story uh, you know google it uh, check it out it's fascinating the way people uh were spending uh as much money as they would on a gorgeous mansion uh in amsterdam uh as they would for one tulip bulb and and obviously that bubble burst and we've seen it um you know those of us that live through the dot coms and of course the the mortgages and and crypto nfts um you know we we don't seem to learn from history we seem to repeat it thinking that uh you know because we're dealing with a new technology or a new product or service that somehow the the laws of of economics and human behavior are different um they they haven't changed yet um so you know every time there's a bubble that bursts uh, there's an overcorrection and we are seeing people taking money off the table people are complaining that it's hard to raise money right now and it is harder than it was uh, a year ago uh, because some people have overreacted and they will eventually come back and and some people are still in the game but they're using a, a renewed sense of caution so you know if you are a startup and you are looking to raise money right now you just need to be a realist right there's a new paradigm uh it may change tomorrow or next week or next month but right now it is what it is so you work within that um now to some degree in fact there there i would argue that there is a little bit of a bubble that's already been created uh, with respect to ai startups um if you say ai again very reminiscent of the dot coms um you know i'm selling shoelaces so what oh i'm shoelaces.com oh okay you're you're dot com you're 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 hot uh, how much money do you want right that didn't quite work that way but but that was somewhat of the sentiment so now it's same story shoelaces.ai oh your your shoelaces have ai built in i'm not sure what they would do maybe make you a better jogger or something but um I, i'm not going to invest in that so please don't ask but um you know uh, th there there is a little bit of a bubble starting um but um people are still doing their due diligence um so you know trotting out another old saying honesty is the best policy and and when i was thinking about that i said you know that's interesting that they phrase it that way um they don't i mean of course you know your mom your dad your you know you know religion or what have you will tell you that honesty is a good thing it's a moral thing but if you think about that saying it says honesty is the best policy um so that's mm. kind of interesting so you know i'll i'll editorialize a, a little bit uh, to say uh, i have seen that in my life that honesty is the best policy in every relationship not just business cuz my wife remembers everything for the last 22 years um and fortunately uh, i made a decision a long time ago that i you know not even a white lie uh, and and it's really fortunate because if we talk about a party from 20 years ago i don't even remember going to the party um so if i had fibbed about you know something that i had done um and she would say no no uh, i you know that's not true that's not what you said or did or or what have you then you know what is my word worth right if if it's a it doesn't matter you you created that question in the mind of the person or entity that you're entering into a relationship with if i can't trust you about your revenues or about the customer or about having a con oh yeah i have a contract well do you have a con well he you know he said he was going to sign okay well then you don't have it so if you're exaggerating even again unintentionally because you're trying to put on then what is the investor going to think about when you make other statements um so you know 
your your credibility can be damaged, you know, forever. And you know, to Rob's point, if you're if it's something material and you have misrepresented or lied, uh, they can ask for their money back. They can get, look for damages. And if it's intentionally again FTX, Theranos, whatever, we've all seen the consequences. Um, so, so what does this have to do with AI? Um, so what do, do, does anybody here think that the angels, VCs, uh, investors, they, they haven't heard of chat GPT. They, they don't know. They're not looking to use these same tools. So if, if you don't think that they're going to take your entire data room, uh, I'm going to assume people are, you know, somewhat familiar if you're looking at, at, you know, raising money that you have to put all kinds of documents out there uh, for people to examine. And, and, you know, those are documents that are, you know, kept, and, you know, there's a history there. And, you know, the AI um, can go through every single word in your, or, or number in your documents and look for inconsistencies, mistakes, uh, what have you. Uh, in, in fact, while I was preparing this presentation, uh, it, it gave me an idea, um, and so I'll toss this out to, to Bix. We can talk about this later. Maybe you'll help me build this. Uh, I think we, we could have a great business, uh, an, an AI tool that would take all the information in your data room, and then ideally you could plug in anything you know about the people that you're talking to, angels, VCs, whatever, and, and the tool would examine what you've given and or what you're going to deliver uh, and look for mistakes inconsistencies so you can correct them and also to say well based on the uh, investment history of this other party and even you know maybe if you feed in their social media or whatever um, you know based on what I know about the people that you're looking to invest instead of making your deck blue you should make it red uh, in, instead of saying that you're going to, you know, make a billion dollars, maybe you should just, you know, be more reasonable and so on. So I think there's a, there's a great opportunity here for the startups and, you know, because the investors, everybody's going to be using AI to analyze information better to make the best deal that you can. So um, until, you know, Bix builds this amazing service and, and and i help to commercialize it you're going to need to do your own approximation um, so use the tools uh, do you have decks projections other documents uh, that you're looking to present use it to run them through um, and, and look for mistakes inconsistencies um, you know uh, if you know if you can um, Tell it, you know, what questions would you ask based on this information as an investor? What questions would you ask? Um, you know, run your uh, everything you know about your competition through. So, you know, analyze the pros and cons of the competition, because, again, the people that are looking to invest are going to be looking at who you compete with and, you know, how how they compare. Um, um, you know, every financial model I've ever seen has dozens, probably hundreds of assumptions. Um, so say, you know, what what questions would you ask uh, based on, on, on this model? Right. And then you can be prepared for it. Uh, you know, why do you project that your revenues are going to go up 10x in year three? Uh, you know, you better be prepared for that question because it's coming. Um, so, you know, all these principles are, are, are not new. They're from, I've seen them in previous, you know, due diligence, but now it's on steroids because they have all these tools that can be used. Um, so, you know, if, if the investor doesn't come back with a whole bunch of objections, I, I would say you should take that as a sign that the one of two things. Uh, and if an investor isn't asking you a lot of hard questions, they're probably not interested. They're just yesing you to death because uh, they don't want to argue. They don't want 
to be, you know, the, the messenger that gets shot for telling you that your business isn't going to work because if it does, then they look stupid or they don't get a chance to come in your next round. So if they're not giving you objections, it's because they're not looking to invest. The other possibility is that the investor is grandma. And um, while you're, you know, sitting at the table and you're asking her for money, she's going to give it to you anyway. She doesn't even know what an app is and why you want to build one. But, you know, she loves you, so she's going to give you the money, whatever you're doing with it. Um, so, you know, if you're talking to serious investors, they are looking for every flaw before they write that check. Um, they're not being mean. Many of them are mean, but, you know, that doesn't imply that this these questions are of any kind of malice. They're doing their job and you be ready for it. And when you answer them properly, then it won't be the first or the second or the fifth or the tenth. This is hard. But if you learn from this and you work at it, you will be able to hopefully raise money. Uh, because you will have used all the tools at your disposal, including AI, to, to be properly prepared. Uh, and, and, and just in closing, please do, do everybody a favor. Do not take grandma's money for your startup unless she's got a million dollars and you know that the few bucks that you're taking, if you lose them, she won't even care or notice. Um, otherwise, leave her pension alone.